Hello there friends, welcome to another episode of the Second Age TV show. My name is Strider and as usual with me are Kyle. Hello man, how are you? Doing good, good to see you guys, good to be here. And of course Lakitia, hello, how are you doing? Hey everybody, uh, I'm doing fine, this has been quite a week. <laughs> I'm still recovering from all the hand analyzing and you know <laughs> everything we've been doing so this has been lots of fun yeah this this week was definitely crazy and but probably just the introduction to the craziness that's going to ha be happening in the next two weeks so so hopefully okay hopefully. yeah uh, i'm sure <laughs> um but okay still we have some other cool things to discuss today so I'm gonna just head out and read the first exclusive. So, the first news for today is that Markella Cavano will play a major proto-hobbit in the upcoming Amazon The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. So, we have another really good news regarding casting. So, Lakiti, I think you have something to say about this. I have lots of things to say about this. I'm I'm overjoyed to be fi to 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 finally be able to have this confirmed. Um, so Markella Cavanaugh has actually been the very first cast member to have been announced, which was back in summer of 2019, I think. And from the very beginning, the reports have been saying that her character is codenamed Tyra. Um, so for the longest time, everybody's been speculating that Tyra is in fact uh, an elven character with the fan favorite being Calabrian. Um but um I was I was I was in that camp as well for a while. However, something about her description didn't read particularly elven to me. So, uh here's her character breakdown that Night Edge Media published back in January 2020. Um that was shortly before the cast was announced. And the description reads, Tyra, series regular, female, 16 to 25, a singular young lady needed for this delightful leading role with dramatic and comedic elements, characterful, should be able to play a wide-eyed 15 to 17 year old, with a, but with a strength and maturity beyond her years. And the character description also marked that she's been, she's been portrayed by Markella Kavanaugh. So a few things here stood out to me immediately. Um, I never really imagined Amazon would go as far as to make the elven romantic lead that Calabrian would presumably be um, have like particularly comedic elements to her. Um, that seemed a bit off to me from the get-go. And then same thing goes for the leaked audition scripts that uh, Redanian Intelligence published back in October 2019. So in both their two scenes, we see Tyra interacting with her friends or maybe relative. Um, and she mentions things like, or they mention things like bears and wagons and berries, which are all things that don't, like altogether, this doesn't give off a particularly elven vibe to me. And um, so so I, I, I struggle to connect the wagons to an elven maiden. So last autumn, a friend of the channel, White Wolf, she suggested that Tyra maybe reads a little bit more like a hobbit, which immediately started making sense to me. So now we can finally officially confirm that. Um, and just, just one other thing. So if we take a look at the posters that Amazon has published this last, what, what, what was it, Thursday? Um, I think we have two posters that could potentially fit Tyra very well. And one of them has berries, uh, like the, the character is holding berries, which is something that of course appeared in the audition tape. And um, I think that's the one that Tyra actually is. And uh, the other one I think could be a character codenamed May, uh, who is apparently being portrayed by Megan Richards. Um, so... We also know from the leaked production uh, sheets that May also has a scale double. So I think both of these characters could potentially be hobbits. Okay, this is it for me. <laughs> what do you guys think? Well, I think you took us on quite a journey there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess that's, that, that's the fun with, uh, with this show because you get like something 
two, two, two weeks ago, two years ago, and then for two years you have to speculate and just gather the clues. And I mean, what you just described to us is basically what's been happening with the show this whole time. Like you get tiny clues and you have to deduce things. Yeah. So yeah, um, to, to comment specifically on the news, um, I, I didn't see her in anything before this. Um, so I'm, I, like, I like the casting. I can definitely see her as a proto-hobbit. And I would agree that now that you mention it, uh, the photo with the berries, that could be her. And uh, I agree that the whole description that, uh, that, you, that you read, um, it did sound more like hobbits. So that could be perhaps during those journeys, wherever they may be journeying to. Uh, like maybe they have a camp and then they go on some supply run or something like that. Then they want to come back to the camp or something. So yeah, that could fit. Of course, those scenes won't necessarily be in the show. So that's worth mentioning, definitely. Uh, but yeah, uh, Kyle, how about you? What do you think about this? Yeah, I just kind of want to reiterate the, the, that last point you made that, yeah, these audition tapes are probably designed for the auditions and not for the show itself. Um, but I think it gives yeah. us a clue as to the context around the scenes that, that these actors will be portraying their characters in. Um, but yeah, that's uh, I think uh, you guys kind of said it all. So we can move on to also say that Markella, Markella's character, will discover and be alongside the meteor man who is described as an old man. Uh, who doesn't remember that much about himself. Uh, the Harfoot tribe discover the man from the asteroid. Uh, Daniel Wayman will be playing the Meteor Man, which uh, which character this is, we, we don't know yet. Um, but we do believe that uh, Derek, which is a character description from Night's Edge Media that we had discussed a couple times on the show um, already, um, could be a potential... Um, candidate for for this role um so it's a series regular male 35 to 50 um an amazing leading role for a methodical thoughtful and immersive actor he vacillates between stubborn gravitas and a sense of sweetness and innocence an enigmatic figure he is initially curious childlike and very out of place from his surroundings but with a deep and primal sense of purpose that drives him underneath it all um so yeah we we, we this kind of sounds like someone who who comes from from space and, and lands and has, uh, is concussed or something and, and can't remember everything and yeah. is, is out of place from his surroundings but knows deep down that there's something that they're there for and it'll be interesting to discover what that that might be yeah indeed and can i just say i think uh fellowship has confirmed on this on the um, council of fans live stream that this person from the meteor is the one that's holding an apple, I believe. And I think that matches as well, because at the top of that picture, you can see like the ends of a beard, like a, a longish beard. And we do know that Daniel Wayman has been sporting this, this long, lush beard throughout the, the filming. It's by no means conclusive, but I think it's another evidence that this could indeed be uh, that actor. Uh, but yeah, for me, this really does sound like it, it makes sense. I mean, somebody who's arrived via a meteor would be a little bit confused, perhaps. Um, so that's, that's why I think the Derek character description could be very fitting. Um, but the whole context around the scene, I wonder what's, where that's going to lead us. I mean, the Hobbits discovering this person. I'm really curious to see how that relationship then builds up. Is this the relationship that's going to be um, like a central theme of the show between this this confused older man and the Hobbits? Is this a potential friendship that's developing here? I know a lot of people have speculated, could this be a, a Gandalf-like figure or could this be Gandalf actually himself? So I'm curious to see where that lead, leads us. So I would say that <laughs> I'm still not over the whole meteor thing. I probably won't be until I see the actual scene and then have some time to think about it. I hope that they are, uh, I mean, of, of course, and we keep mentioning this this whole time, that we do not, do not know the whole context of any of these situations that we are discussing. So maybe they did indeed find a way to just fit this in the, in the narrative. 
Uh, I hope they did, but at the moment we don't really have too much to go on and to, to, to continue on. And for me this is very confusing, especially having, you know, this Meteor Man who is an old man and having him with interact with hope i mean it, it would make sense to have it would make some thematical sense at least to have um some of the mire i guess yeah i'm like you know maybe gandalf who knows but that's just a lot of changing the whole lore and the timeline it doesn't seem that necessary i think that that's the main thing like it doesn't seem to have any particular point to it, to what we know generally about the lore of the Second Age. But, you know, as I said, maybe there is, I mean, I'm sure that there is a point to it and hopefully it will fit uh, the casting itself. I'll, I mean, I like it. Uh, he, he's, he has been around for 20 years, almost, uh, judging by his IMDb page. So I think whatever this role is, I'm happy with the casting. I can definitely see him pull off this. If we connect this to the Derek description, I think he could pull off this role. But of course, we don't know that that is him in the, uh, indeed, that the Meteor Man and Derek are the same person. But yeah. Just... yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. I'm done. I'm done. Um, I just wanted to say that um, did... Fellowship mentioned yesterday that this person is potentially turning evil at some point. Yes. Okay, then it, it can't be Gan Gandalf anyway, but yeah. There's that and there's there's the, going back to the poster image itself, the apple, mm -hmm. like does the apple represent something or is it meant to just hint at the fact that, that this person is, is on the sets with the hobbits or, you know, is, is it, are we looking at some kind of, oh. you know, does it represent the temptation or, or what what does it represent exactly? Oh, that's a, that's a nice catch. I didn't connect that to the the presence of the hobbits in the scene that we were talking about yeah yeah that's a nice catch like his whole outfit on the picture kind of reminded me of of radagast in the hobbit films yeah mm. uh, i don't i don't think it's radagast but it did give give off those vibes well it can't be because so. there's no bird poop on it so it can't be radagast <laughs> give it time well yeah but maybe they you know they intentionally did uh, avoid showing you the face so <laughs> that's you know, true the could point. be there very good point <laughs> I mean, yeah, because um, everywhere, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, oh, it doesn't make sense, actually, yeah, good. Th thank you for reminding us um, that it was said that he may be evil. Mm. So, yeah, of course, then it, it's not going to be Gandalf. But again, that's that's or, something or we don't, it, yeah. It's not going to be Gandalf. Yeah. But who, that, that's something we, we don't know for sure, of course. There's, uh, I mean, this is definitely an enigmatic figure. Like, yeah. however you look at it, yeah. we have zero idea what's happening here. So, yeah. who knows what the character may turn out to be. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's confusing, definitely. I, I hope we're going to get some further clues with the trailer. Well, I think yeah. we. I, yeah. think the, I think the trailer is just gonna leave us all the more confused, which I like. I must say I like, and I really liked what they did with these posters here, because if we got the faces and the character names, we would we'd be like, oh, that's so cool. But now, like the way they did it, it's got the whole span fan <laughs> fandom speculating fandom. Uh, <laughs> it's got the full uh, <laughs> the whole fandom speculating guessing checking out people's hands stuff like that so you know it's really interactive it's creating a lot of buzz and excitement and i think that's that's a wise thing they did um i agree um yeah and i'm just trying to think who this may be like that's yeah is it is it a myr because let's be fair if they have an elf or a, or a dwarf, or a man, or a hobbit arriving on a comet, or like an asteroid, meteor, sure. Um, I mean, that's just not sens sensical at all. So if it is, you know, a figure arriving on a meteor, then it makes sense that it is a Maiar. So we know about five Maiar, the five Istari. We also know about Tom Bombadil, but I don't think, and I really seriously hope not that this is not him. Like, I think that would be one of the worst 
ideas, like one of the words of the direction, because it doesn't serve any particular purpose to have him show up. So maybe one of the blue wizards, and well, you know, maybe one of them is evil. But... Okay, so I have another suggestion here, and I'm going to tie this to our next ex exclusive. So obviously there is another Maya that we know of that appears during the, sep the Second Age. And that, of course, is our Lord and Savior, Sauron. <laughs> uh, so our, our third exclusive is Sauron will at some point in season one attack the Hobbits and has spent a bit of time on the Hobbit sets. And of course, the question then presents itself, could this mysterious meteor man that's being portrayed by Daniel Wayman be Sauron? We, I know we already discussed this option when we we did the breakdown of the Meteor Guy news. Um, but in context mm -hmm. of what we now know, do we think that Daniel Wayman could be portraying Sauron? Yeah, I think um, there's, you know, um, the, the, there's the shape-shifting element of, of Sauron that, that could certainly play a big part here if that's the direction they decide to go in. Um yeah, we we I don't think we'll know who Sauron is until we know who Sauron is, and I think that's very intentional on on the part of the of the the writers here. Yeah, I agree because because uh, casting Sauron properly is probably the most important bit, bit of casting that we will have in this show. Like, they need to really really score with this one now um i i wanted to suggest that this may be sauron after the fall of numenor somehow but actually it doesn't make sense because his body was destroyed and then after that he couldn't take an, a nice shape anymore like a beautiful shape his anatar high charisma uh no more sexy being was destroyed that's the end yeah, of Sexy Sauron. But, but maybe they, they can just, uh, you know, twist that a bit just to have him, have him not be, you know, the usual pretty afterwards. And, you know, maybe they will connect this whole beautiful, not beautiful, however, however you want to put it, with being old. Maybe they will make that connection. And then maybe this could be him after Numenor somehow, but still... It's, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's possible that it is him, especially if he's going to turn on hobbits and attack them. The, the one the one reason why I think this, this isn't particularly likely, although I would really like the idea, is the fact that I'm, I'm quite sure it's a bit too soon for the downfall of Numenor. I, I'm sure it's too soon for mm. seeing the consequences of the downfall of Numenor. I mean, I'm... I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be seeing Sauron returning to Middle-earth and having scenes with other characters after the downfall has already happened. Because mm. that would mean that the future four seasons would all be about, you know, the build-up towards the Last Alliance. And mm. I don't think Amazon will want to skip the opportunity to make the downfall this huge event that it has several seasons worth of material building up to it. I agree That's with that. There's I... there's some there's some pacing, weird pacing things there. But uh, mm -hmm. on the other hand, it, it uh, just to go back to that point, um, we know that Sauron's physical form uh, gets destroyed when the temple collapses, basically, right? So maybe if, like Strider said, if they're playing on that idea that maybe he doesn't actually lose his physical form, if he's if if this character is able to arrive on a meteor and not have its form destroyed. What's to say that that couldn't be the case in Numenor as well? Okay. Yeah, that, but then you mean this as a as a this event as a prequel to the Numenorean downfall, that's, right? That's okay. the other the other yeah, side yeah. of the issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Possibly. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I want, I I do agree that what I said about Numenor doesn't really, really? make sense time wise. Uh, it's just like one thought that I had, like I actually had uh, this uh, video in my head of, you know, maybe there's also like some sort of a volcano, tiny volcano or something on, on Numenor. And then when it all goes to, you know, you know where, then, you know, it just gets launched <laughs> across the pond to Middle Earth and just <laughs> yeah. lands among the hobbits. Yeah. 
<laughs> that would be something. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm very, I'm, that would be <laughs> just like the genie from the Aladdin cartoon or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see that happen. Yeah. No, no, please. please. Nope. Um, can I just say nope, something nope. else that's a, that's maybe freaking me out a bit? Um, of course, Amazon is doing their own thing and everything, but to me, having Sauron be aware of the existence of hobbits millennia before you know he launches the search of of nasty little bagginses at the end of the third age. Um, I don't know. Does this make sense? Because I mean, as as far as I remember, Sauron wasn't really aware of what or who the hobbits are at the end of the third age. Of course, they could be doing this in a way that maybe Sauron by the end of the third age wouldn't be aware that the hobbits are still existing, or he wouldn't be aware where the Shire is, yeah. since we don't expect these characters to be settled in the Shire. Yeah. Um, but for mm -hmm. me, having him interact with the hobbits in any case. I don't like it at all. Yeah. I don't like the hobbits participating in these grand world changing events. I don't mind them, their presence in the show per se, but given the importance they get at the end of the third age, I don't want to see him, see them having the same importance just yet. Yeah. I, I agree with what you're saying there. Unless Sauron is somehow in some way, in some form, by the end of the season or by the end of the series under the impression that the hobbits don't exist anymore or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my caveat. Yeah. Um, or if he's in fact the meteor guy, the whole concussion thing yeah. and him being a little bit confused sure. and yeah. stuff sure. could result in him forgetting all about the hobbits. Sure. It doesn't sound too plausible to me. It it sounds like a <laughs> very lame plot twist. It's but a possibility. Of course, yeah. this is because we don't have any context, so it could be whatever. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah, I think that what you said, uh, definitely makes sense. That uh, it makes sense that it doesn't make sense for for him to know about the hobbits, you know, five thousand years before the events of the War of the Ring. Um. But then, yeah, definitely, uh, he may think that they are all dead or moved on or something. And of course, we don't expect them, as you said, to be to actually live in the Shire at the moment. So, uh, like d during the show so that could fit with him not knowing about the shire and the land of the hobbits and so on because if, if their village or camp or where, whatever it is gets destroyed or something they are fleeing away then he can like in five thousand years yeah sure he's gonna care he's gonna care about some funny little beings who have no purpose for him you know or work so i mean there is room for them to deal with this issue of Sauron knowing, not knowing about them in 5,000 years from now. But I agree, I don't think this should be Sauron. I don't think this person should be here at all, but if, <laughs> if the meteor person is here, and it is, uh, I, I don't think, yeah, I, I agree that it shouldn't be Sauron. Mm. Okay, before we wrap this up, I just want to say um, the fact that We'll be getting the, the Hobbits, of course, has been a little bit controversial among the fans. Uh, I'm not particularly excited about their, their presence. However, I am quite excited to have a young Hobbit gal take the center stage this time. Because, you know, we've had adventurous young Hobbits like Merry and Pippin. We had the loyal every Hobbit like Sam. Uh, do you want to say something? No, I just want to say, like, we have five man main Hobbits. Oh yeah, yeah, five yeah. We have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like five guys. Yeah. So then we have, of course, the more contemplative Frodo and the one that rules them all, the uniquely scholarly Bilbo. We haven't had any Hobbit girls in the spotlight yet. I think the most we've seen of Hobbit females were Lobelia, Sackville Baggins, and of course Rosie Cotton. Mm. And we haven't been introduced to many others. So. Having Tyra and possibly her friend May, which are of course both code names, uh, being the one of the main Hobbit protagonists, that really excites me. I want to see what Hobbit females look like. I mean, you know, I I just want to I just want to see where where they take these characters. I agree. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, it's it's nice seeing that 
definitely we had, as you said, several <laughs> male hobbit leads. So yeah, sure, let's give some power to the to the hobbit girls as well. Um, I don't mind their presence that much. Like, they didn't just come to being into the in in the middle of the third age or something like that. So they were there. They obviously were created. If we're gonna go back to Sumerian and all that, because they are they are considered to be a branch of mankind. So they're not. I mean, we all we all talk about them as a separate race, but I think that Tolkien classifies them as a specific sub branch of humankind. So I mean, they were they weren't didn't just come come to being, you know, thousand years before the War of the Ring. Yeah. So it makes sense to show them. Why not? But as long as they, yeah, as long as they do not play this huge epic role in this conflict. I'm fine with them. Like, yeah, let's just see some nice broad hobbits. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, yep. Tol yep. Tolkien himself said they they likely spurred up in the elder days, so they've been around. Mm -hmm. And um, I just hope they're mm -hmm. handled well. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think we covered everything we had for today. Yep. Interesting news for sure. Uh, do you have any any final comments regarding any of anything of this? Any? Exclusive? I'm just happy to have this confirmed. I'm so 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 happy that we're it's finally out in the open um, that Markella Kavanaugh's Tyra is a Hobbit. So, yay! Let, let's... I'm I, I I'm absolutely sure she's gonna be lovely. So, I'm looking forward to that. Let's uh, cross our fingers that we get a glimpse in a in a, a trailer or a teaser in the next week or so yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> okay well then i think that's that's all for this week so thank you thank you to people who tuned in to watch this on sunday uh have a lovely week and you know see you soon maybe sooner than you expect see you next time stay safe have fun bye bye